Hello everyone, welcome to Moon Ride. This is Dave Johnson and I'm channeling the man in the moon. Uh, today I do want to do a political reading. Uh, nobody seems to be talking much about this. I just noticed one article on subpoenas which have been issued for January 6th commission. Uh, I am very, very, very interested in this. I think there's a lot here. And I'm going to go ahead and ask. Um, I've just got the... Um, article right here in front of me, and it looks like four people, two of whom you've never heard of, um, got uh, subpoenas. Mark Meadows, who's the Chief of Staff, Dan Scabino, uh, Deputy Chief of Staff, Stephen Bannon, who we know, and uh, Cash Patel, who's a, a former uh, Pentagon Chief of Staff. I am being led to Mark Meadows first. So, Spirit, what is going to happen with Mark Meadows and the subpoena? January 6th Commission. Mark Meadows, Mark Meadows. Mm. Well, um, Mark Meadows is running. It's like he's running away and like got his, looking behind him. He's trying to get away. There does not look like much hope. Oh, guess who stops him? <laughs> Nancy Pelosi and uh, Adam Schiff. They're like, where are you going, buddy? Uh-huh. And uh, they got the goods on him. You can tell by the look on their faces that they have the goods on this guy. He's kind of backing away. Uh, but he can't go back. Mm, great deal of anger. He's actually sitting in the... Uh, He's sitting in sort of the you know spot where the witness sits and answers commission's questions. Um, he's very agitated, very angry, very nervous. He's talking to his lawyers, wondering what he could say. Um, this man is uh, in a fight for his life. He knows how serious this is. So he knows that he could go to prison if he uh, lies at this point. He also knows he could go to prison if he tells the truth. I see him being very frustrated. Uh, the problem, of course, is if he doesn't confess to, to this, uh, there are others who might confess beforehand. It's a very difficult position for him to be in. And he can't, he, he can't really lie about what he talked to about Trump. He can pretend that he doesn't remember, which I'm sure he's going to do. But um, you know, he's, he's, uh, he can't lie, because that's a, a, a serious crime. He's going to do everything he can to just sidestep the issue and to give political answers uh, to those questions. He won't give Trump up. He will not uh, tell the truth. Is anything else happening? No, he's done. He's he's not going to... Uh, He's, he's going to just try to get away with as little as possible. Uh, let's see if the others... I don't know who this guy is very well. Dan Scavino Jr. All right, what's he going to do? Now, he's getting a little sneaky here. We don't know him. But understand that his political future is not necessarily on the line like Mark Meadows is. Scavino would be wise to tell the truth. Uh, there's no reason for him to lie. He didn't really do anything wrong. Um, you know, he did do something wrong. He didn't stop a crime. But uh, this is a less serious crime. So he seems to be talking to some people secretly, like he's getting um, kind of back-channel information, again, to Schiff and Pelosi. Yeah, he's making a deal. It'll uh, surprise us, the deal that he makes. It'll surprise us um, that he comes, he goes to that uh, commission and he tells them uh, largely the truth. There is a bit of remorse on his part. He does regret some of the things that uh, took place. This is just starting now. Uh, 
he wouldn't feel any remorse if he didn't get caught. But the fact that he's getting a subpoena, well, uh, remorse is starting to kick in. What's he going to do? Yeah, I think that he might uh, be the one to tell the truth and break the story open. And keep in mind that he would be privy to what Meadows said so he could um, show Meadows to be a liar. Uh, there's also Bannon. Ooh, that snake. Ooh, that's just like he's just like the oiliest human being you ever saw in your life. He's going to wait and see which way the wind blows. Steve Bannon is interested in one thing, and that is Steve Bannon. There's no ideology here, nothing that he truly believes in. He'll just do what's good for Steve Bannon. He is, you know, somewhat concerned about his political future. But he honestly, he's so cynical, he couldn't care less. He couldn't care less what another Republican thinks of him. He just, all he cares about is the bottom line, and that's Steve Bannon. So he'll flow the way the wind blows. And when it gets really tough for Meadows, he will, you know, have no problem undercutting him. He'll just um, uh, do what Bannon does, which is get away with things. So is he going to tell the truth? Yeah, more or less, he will tell the truth. Who put it in some terms that seem more appealing, but he'll tell the truth to, to save himself, yeah. Nope, no more on Bannon. There's this last guy, again, Cash Patel, uh, who was former Pentagon Chief of Staff. Yeah, he's facing a, a, a lot of alarm. There's a good deal of alarm for him. I understand, you know, for the just the feeling that you want justice to be done. And in this sense alone, the justice really is being done. These people are uh, kept up nights worrying about what happened and worrying whether to tell the truth. It's going to be really difficult for them to lie and uh, get away with it. It's going to be really hard for them to tell the truth because Trump will skewer them, call them a liar, they'll be ruined. Cash Patel gives me the impression of being a more diehard Trump supporter. He truly believes the um, ideology of Trump. For him, it's not a joke. And this is a dangerous sort of arrogance, because it means that he will walk in and say, well, why not? Why shouldn't we take over the country? We're the, ba we're the greatest. So uh, I kind of think that he's so delusional. Is he going to tell the truth? I kind of feel like he would when pushed. He's so delusional that, you know, he truly believes it's justified to do what he did, uh, what Trump did. So uh, there's no reason to lie for him. And if he puts it in those kinds of terms, then, hey, you know, oh, I thought it was great to have a revolution, and Trump hears that, and, you know, Trump can't really criticize him for agreeing with him, you know. So that's how um, far gone this person is. There seem to be some other mitigating factors with him. Tell me more about Cash Patel. There may be a point where he becomes disillusioned with Trump. It has not happened yet, but there could be a point where he realizes it's him or me. He also realizes that there are others who will go before the January 6th Commission who will undermine whatever story he's given if he doesn't tell the truth. I'm going to just ask the ultimate question, what will happen? What will these subpoenas mean for this uh, group?
for the January 6th commission. I see total score on uh, the Democrats' part, like slam dunk, total score. Um, all of the Democrats are high-fiving each other. This is it. This is this really is um, a gold mine of truth, and it will be very beneficial, I think, to the Democrats as they push through this. It's going to help in the election, in the next election. It's going to help because people are already angry at Trump. There's a, a you know small sliver of people who are still sort of in the middle. Um, slowly, these people are all changing their minds as we get some perspective on it. This is going to be like a um, like the gold cup for Democrats. I know we've been saying this for a long time, but this time it does feel like it's very real. The uh, Justice Department is behind the truth. The January 6th Commission is behind the truth. Look forward to uh, some relief here. Uh, where we do find out the truth and where people do, at least uh, in a greater sense, condemn Trump for Trump for what he did. Thanks so much for watching.